So Dr. Daniel Amen, you've been trying keto here for a little while. Why did you start this? What, what is your experience so far? So I, I have a very interesting relationship with ketogenic diet. So I'm also a child psychiatrist and about 20 years ago, I started reading research on how ketogenic diets decrease seizure frequency up to 50% in children. And I'm like, oh, that's so interesting. Because as a psychiatrist, I use anti-seizure medicines all the time for a wide variety of psychiatric conditions, for anxiety, for violence, for um, bipolar disorder, which is, you know, a pretty big mood instability disorder. And so I thought, you know, I wonder if it would help for many of my patients. I wanna mention, I popped a 30% off discount link down below for Thrive Market. Now, Thrive Market is an online grocery store, but it's not like a regular grocery store. It's set up by different diet categories. Okay, so you've got keto, you've got vegan, you've got paleo, you've got different diet categories. So it allows you to get the best quality foods, Okay, no preservatives, no garbage. You can stock up your whole house, not just your pantry. They have sustainable meat and seafood options, so you can stock up your fridge. They're working on really cool options as well. So you're looking at just everything you can get in a store, essentially, that's gonna be in frozen or in the regular section, delivered to your doorstep. And with this link, you save 30% off your entire first grocery order plus a free $50 gift. So I've also created my fasting bundle, which is things that I recommend people get for breaking their fast and also for sustaining their eating period with the right kind of foods. So that link is in the top line of the description right below this video. I definitely recommend you check them out. They are a sponsor on this channel, but they have been for like five or six years now. And it is definitely where you want to be going as pretty much your one-stop shop almost entirely your one-stop shop for what you can get delivered to your doorstep for your intermittent fasting routine. And I come from a family of fat people. My dad used to hate when I would say that, but it's true. Obesity runs in my family. I have an older brother that's 150 pounds overweight and a younger sister is about the same. And um, I'm not gonna be overweight. So I'm very interested in how I eat and the impact on my body. I have a granddaughter who, when she was five months old, developed a wicked seizure disorder. In fact, one day she had 160 seizures. I mean, it was awful. I have the videos of it. Looks like she's being electrocuted. And she went to the emergency room and the doctor wanted to put her on a medicine that wipes out her immune system. And I'm like, no, you're fired. Um, what about the ketogenic diet? And on a ketogenic diet, she lost her seizures. And she's now 12 and she's been on a modified ketogenic diet and she's basically seizure free. So I'm a huge fan of this diet. And then last year, I interviewed Chris Palmer. And uh, Chris is the training director at McLean Hospital for the Department of Psychiatry. So he's a very bright guy. And in his book, Brain Energy, he talks about the ketogenic diet, mitochondrial function, and how it's helped a number of his psychiatric patients. And I wanted to lose a few pounds. And so I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get my mitochondria healthy, healthier, because I almost always eat really well. But I shifted over to keto and energy is more consistent. I'm not hungry. I'm, it, and we did a post on it. This is not your father's keto because it's not all saturated fat and bacon and uh, bad stuff and artificial um, sweeteners. It's like, no, no, no. Um, it's a healthy form of keto. We use MCT oil, avocados, eggs, nuts, seeds, um, low glycemic berries. So what am I missing? 
Um, I, I guess I'm missing oranges, although I make my own natural lemonade because lemons are very low glycemic. Yeah, it's uh, you know the first book that I wrote was called the the New Mediterranean Diet, and it was ketogenic Mediterranean, and it was I uh, I've sort of became at that time a little bit of the black sheep in the ketogenic community because I wasn't a fan of high amounts of saturated fat. I wasn't a big fan of eat an unlimited ribeyes. I was much more about taking a Mediterranean approach to it. As I said, hey, what is what, are, what is it that we're trying to accomplish here with a ketogenic diet? You know, are we trying to have flexibility? Maybe for some, or are we trying to make better choices? And there's two diets that have a lot of bodies of research behind them. One is the Mediterranean, and believe it or not, one is the ketogenic or low carb diet. And yes, there are a lot of studies on plant-based. Yes, there are a lot of studies in different directions, but a lot of them look at them very blanket. They'll look at high carb versus low carb. And as you well know, there are various subcategories within each. To say you eat a high carb diet could be, there could be a chance that it's a healthy high carb diet. I think it's probably pretty slim in the United States for it to be a healthy high carb diet, but there's a lot of subcategories there. So when you look at high carb versus low carb versus say looking at Mediterranean versus low carb, you're like, wait a minute, these are not these opposing diets. These are actually diets that can parallel. So rather than being like a, uh, or I should actually say they're more perpendicular, really, because they intersect. Take all these benefits that come from a Mediterranean approach and intersect that with all these benefits that we get from a ketogenic principle. High monounsaturated fatty acid intake, polyunsaturated fatty acid intake, moderate amounts of saturated fat, lean protein, polyphenol-rich vegetables, polyphenol-rich, flavonoid-rich, you know, low glycemic fruits. Just like you said, what exactly are you missing? High amounts of fiber. We find that you actually do get all the benefits of the Mediterranean diet, but with ketogenic principles applied, you don't need to have it the ligands. stabilize your blood sugar. Absolutely. Like this is 50% of Americans are diabetic or pre-diabetic. This is a disaster. And the benefit of a lower carbohydrate diet is you get insulin control. Now, everybody's thrilled with Ozempic uh, because of the insulin yep. control. And there was just an article out this week, plastic surgeons, their business is booming so that you know they can cut off the flabby skin that is happening when people lose all that weight. It's like, well, why don't you just get on a diet that modifies insulin, that helps get insulin under control? Yeah, well, and if you're looking at, you know, GLP-1 receptor agonist, and you're looking at the mechanism of action there and how various foods, I don't want to say have a similar action because they're definitely not as potent, but many of the foods that are on a ketogenic, a Mediterranean ketogenic diet are potent GLP-1 stimulators. Fiber is one of the most potent GLP-1 stimulators. Protein, one of the most potent GLP-1 stimulators, whether it's plant-based protein or animal-based protein, both can have a similar effect. Uh, some polyphenols seem to have various actions, various tannins that you're gonna find in tea and certain vegetables are gonna have similar actions. So you have a lot of benefit that is almost acting as, dare I say, a, a natural GLP-1 receptor agonist, but um, again, full disclaimer. But without the $1,000 a month cost. Yeah, yeah, and full <laughs> disclaimer, I mean, it's not as potent. We're not talking about substituting a food to, to substitute this, but. But one is you can do for the rest of your life. Precisely. That has good effects as opposed to the other that has side effects, often big side effects. And, and anything that's new I'm old enough to like go, okay, I've seen this party before that we, we need to be cautious with it. Well, and that's, uh, it's interesting because when you talk about the ketogenic diet, people think that it's a new fad and they don't realize that it was 1921 where it was, you know, Harvard, where they were looking at it for the use of seizures, you know, and it wasn't, it was 1921 where it was fasting that was used. And between 1921 and 23 is when they found that that common denominator was beta hydroxybutyrate. When people were fasting, they were producing beta hydroxybutyrate, like, wait a minute, but they're not having seizures. Well, we can't starve everyone forever. So how do we find what this magic thing is? And they're going, saying, wait a minute. Okay. This common denominator, when we remove carbohydrates. These people are producing that same thing they produce when they fast and gay, they don't have seizures anymore. And it's, uh, 
So I wanted to ask you, I mean, especially in your professional opinion, you've probably seen it. You talk keto, it, it gets people fired up. It, it, you know, there's a lot of opposition there. For me, it wasn't until I started creating content that I realized there was such opposition. It didn't, just didn't make sense to me. I'm like, okay, this diet potentially saves lives. It makes me feel better. I lost 100, over 100 pounds with it. Like, why are, why are people the way they are? Why do you think people get so up in arms, whether it's keto or any diet? Well, whenever you belong to a tribe, you're a vegetarian, you're keto, you're whatever, um, South Beach, your brain produces oxytocin and the oxytocin connects you to the tribe. And anybody outside the tribe, you hate. Yeah, that's so interesting, especially when you look at, say, the standard American diet or people that just, uh, and I have nothing wrong with counting calories for the record. I mean, thermodynamics, I feel are important. Uh, I feel like there's, that's an important element. So don't get me wrong, but I call it the, uh, the calories in calories out community because it's a large portion of the health and or fitness community it says we shouldn't be worrying about what we're eating, just how much of it. Well, but that's yeah. insane. It's to let only, me just say no, that. Only let think, me just call that out as insane. Now I think yeah. people should count calories if they're overweight because I think of calories like money. And if you're overspending, you're gonna be bankrupt. But the quality of your calories is just as, if not more important, because you're gonna get sick. If you have an 800 calorie a day Twinkie diet, you're gonna get cancer. That's nuts. But at the same time, I can't, I, I know my body, I can't have four bags of macadamia nuts a day because they're really rich in calories, even though it's a very healthy fat. No, it's a, I mean, it's, so it's a very important thing to not throw the baby out with the bathwater when you're talking about calories. Uh, you know, it's, to take your budget analogy, I've used that same and I've extended it. I've said, okay, well, yes, the money still counts, but let's just pretend for a second I have a million dollars and you have a million dollars in Monopoly money. We both have a million dollars, but what's the quality of the Monopoly money? Now it's not directly you know, the same because you can't spend Monopoly money every, anywhere. But let's just say even you had a foreign currency and you were in the United States, you're like, well, my money's valid, it's still money. Yeah, but you can't really use it here. It's the way that I kind of look at the mitochondria saying, okay, well, you have energy, but you can't really use it here. And it's like, yes, it's still energy. From a physics side of things, the law of thermodynamics absolutely still applies, but, if we really do feel that that's the end all be all, then it's not. <laughs> I mean, that's just yeah. narrow thinking. Um, and one of the benefits for me when I do keto, I'm not hungry. I mean, like I go, I can go a long time without thinking about food. Um, and and I also like glucose monitors to see what certain foods do for you because they're different for everyone. Like we're in cherry season and I love cherries, but they spike my blood sugar. So they clearly don't love me back, yeah. right? And, um, and you know, like I said before, I'm not a fan of moderation because I think it's the gateway thought to hell. Yeah, it definitely can and be. And it's my brain, I don't want anything hurting my brain, right? And when you get this concept I call brain envy, I always say Freud was wrong. Penis envy is not the cause of anybody's problem. It's your brain. He was like too low in the body. I'm like, dude, wrong organ. Um, <laughs> you gotta get your brain right. And so why would you like throw bad stuff in your body if it's gonna impact your brain in a negative way. And the, le the level of bioindividuality matters too, and uh, kind of wrap up with this, you know, talking about with CGMs, continuous glucose monitors, you know, you may not react well to cherries for, when I say react well, but you might spike from them. And some of it has to do with your particular microbiome. That can very much so make a point. There were some studies that looked at this where they looked at, uh, a large group of people and you know some people would spike from bananas some people wouldn't some people would spike from cookies some people wouldn't there is probably an element of how you perceive a food to a certain degree but also 
we have to understand that different things will influence that. Your poor sleep could influence how you respond to that cherry. Uh, stress could influence how you respond to that cherry. So uh, my challenge for you is to try that same cherry under different circumstances. Try it at different times of the day. Try it uh, just under different circumstances. And it's probably still going to spike you because yeah, cherries will spike you. Yeah. Uh, but this one thing that I encourage people to try too is uh, no, learn like how you that. respond to a food. Whether your wife is nice to you that day might spike your blood sugar. Oh, it's unreal. Right? Because of stress. Unreal, and yes. And I, I was reading about your per perception of whether or not a food would do it could do it as well. It's yeah. so interesting. No, it's very well, it's so interesting to talk to you. Yeah. Thank you. No, thank you. So, uh, Doc, where can everyone find you? Amenclinics.com. Amen like the last word in a prayer or at Instagram at Doc underscore Amen or on TikTok at Doc Amen and YouTube Amen Clinics. Beautiful. Well, thanks. Yeah, see you tomorrow.